Okay, since we're just starting off with this video series, I thought I'd, I'd concentrate on the basics. So today I want to talk to you about what I call the unholy trio. These are organisms that make you and me sick. There are bacteria, viruses, and something called prions. Okay, that may be new to you. Very interesting. So I'm going to take them one at a time. But to, first, I just want to set the stage by saying if a human hair is about a uh, 100 microns in diameter. Micron is a mic uh, micrometer, which is a, a millionth of a meter. Never mind that. But so human hair is 100 microns in diameter, typically. Okay, 100 microns. Bacteria then are about one micron across. Viruses are typically about a tenth of a micron across. And prions are about a hundredth of a micron across. Okay, so bacteria by far of those three are the biggest, even though it's much smaller than a human hair. And you can see it with an optical microscope. Typical compound, um, a compound means that there are two lenses. You've seen those videos of scientists peering through the <laughs> microscope. Those are optical microscopes that you shine a light on the thing you're looking at and you just look through a great magnification and you can see it. So you can see bacteria with just ordinary optical microscopes, but uh, when it comes to viruses and prions, you can't. You need something called electron microscopes. And maybe in a, a future um, video cast, I'll explain a little bit more about that. But that's, that's just to kind of set the stage. Okay, so bacteria. A bacterium is basically a one-celled organism. About as simple a, an organism as you can find. Okay, one celled organism means it has, you know, a, 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 a cell with a wall on it, maybe uh, some uh, materials inside, including uh, some genetic material, DNA, typically a single strand of DNA, short by comparison to our DNA. But still, it is a complete organism. It's a one cell organism and it's living. And um, they have what I, I'm going to call their own Xerox machine. That is to say, the machinery of that one-celled organism is capable of reproducing itself, like a Xerox machine, okay? And I'll, comp I'll come back to that uh, image or analogy uh, over and over again. So uh, a, a bacteria, uh, a, a bacterium, can duplicate itself. It has all the machinery it needs to do that, okay? And uh, they're tough critters tough. Um, many of them are what we call extremophiles. That means these are organisms that can withstand, you know, volcanic level heat. Find them at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. When I went down to the Titanic, um, the scientists I was with told me that there are bacteria down there at the bottom of the Atlantic, about two and a half miles down, that eat metal and survive the enormous pressures down there and the, and the enormous, uh, very cold temperatures down there. So bacteria are tough guys. They can even withstand radio. I mean, you can find these radioactive toxic waste sites and you'll find, find bacteria there. You have bacteria that eat oil. They're using them like to, to mop up oil spills in some cases. So bacteria then are relatively large, one-celled organisms that are tough and they cause a lot of diseases like the famous bubonic plague or the black plague those are bacteria those are diseases caused by bacteria but you also have things like uh, salmonella pneumonia uh, TB syphilis leprosy all those diseases that you've heard about those are bacterial diseases that's where uh, bacteria will get into your body maybe through your nose through any orifice let's say and um, they will start just uh, multiplying themselves until they just take over. They don't completely take over your body, but they 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 wreak havoc on the insides of your body. So that's a that's the a kind of uh, a bacterial a disease in a microcosm. But not all bacteria are bad. Um, there are bacteria that are in yogurt, for example, that you probably have for breakfast, like I do, pretty often. And there are probiotics, which are bacteria, and there's a whole laundry list of these bacteria that are pretty good for your digestive system. We have bacteria in our gut, in our in our stomach lining. 
they help digest food. So I call them the unholy trio. It's a bad guy, but not all bacteria are bad. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so next, viruses. Okay, viruses <clears throat> are not living. They're not living organisms. They are really particles. We call the, the entire particle of, of a virus a, 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 a virion, and it consists of genetic material in the middle, and it either can be DNA or RNA, which is a kind of uh, nucleic acid, ribonucleic acid. And in, and in fact, the coronavirus has RNA in the middle of it. And then it's surrounded typically by a coat of protein and then a coat of fat. And that's it. Just a little genetic material, a dollop, and then a protein coat, and then a fatty coat, fatty, greasy coat, okay? And that's what makes the coronavirus. And I'll have more to say, but I'll have a whole uh, broadcast on the coronavirus. I'm just going giving you the basics right now. But you'll see the coronavirus, that fatty uh, layer, makes it sticky, and that's menacing. Okay, so they do not have their own Xerox machine. They don't have the complete machinery that a, a bacteria or that you and I have. Okay, our, the cells in our bodies have their own Xerox machine. Viruses don't. So how do they replicate? Ah, they get into a host like you and me let's say, and they basically hijack our Xerox machines. They hijack our cellular machinery and, and they force our cells to replicate the virus. That's how they do it. And uh, it's almost like, a, you know, like a terrorist hijacking an airplane, getting into the cabin of the airplane. Well, a virus manages to get into our cells, hijacks the machinery of our cells, and uses our own Xerox machines to uh, duplicate the viruses many times over, exponentially. That's why it's called a viral virus. Okay, so um, they also cause really bad diseases, like, you know, uh, you know about the coronavirus, of course, but there's the HIV virus, the Spanish flu virus of 1918, one of the deadliest uh, diseases of all time. But, and now this may surprise you, not all viruses are bad. They're not all bad. Um, there are a whole class of viruses called bacteriophages. It's a big name. Um, I'll write it down in the, in the show notes here. <clears throat> Bacteriophages are just phages. And do you know something? Bacteriophages are the most abundant organism on the planet. And what they do is they attack bacteria, not us. They hijack the cellular machinery, the Xerox machines of bacteria. And that's how they replicate themselves. And we have them inside of us, our gut, our skin, our blood. You don't know it, low levels. And these bacteriophages are actually more and more now, and this is you know, still research in the process of being done, but scientists are now using these bacteriophages, these viruses, these human-friendly but bacteria-deadly viruses to uh, treat bacterial infections, in fact, and, and especially bacterial infections that are resistant to drugs. You've heard about that, drug-resistant bacteria. It's becoming a bigger and bigger problem. Well, these viruses, these friendly viruses, I'll call them, uh, are going to be a big weapon for us against those drug-resistant bacteria. Okay, there is also uh, some research that came out on some herpes viruses. And get this, these herpes viruses we're finding out can work hand in hand with our immune system to fight cancer, to fight cancer. Can you imagine that? And from the virus's standpoint, they don't have brains, but <laughs> I'm going to talk as if they do. From the virus's point of view, this is a great strategy because we help them by being hosts to them. And then they help us back by fighting things like other bacterial infections or cancer. So it's an interesting strategy. They kind of lay low. They're helpful to us. 
hey, they don't bother us, they help us, welcome in viruses. So stay tuned for that. There's, there's a lot more research coming along the line. Okay, finally, prions. Prions are really, really interesting, and they have only really been discovered and understood in my lifetime. And uh, prions are smaller than bacteria, smaller than viruses. They're not living. They don't even have genetic material the way viruses do. You know what they are? They're just misshapen proteins. Yeah, a, a prion is a misshapen protein molecule. And I'll do a, I may do a, a broadcast on the, the wide and wonderful world of proteins because people don't understand proteins. It, one of the things about proteins, they're almost like origami. You, you don't just piece together chemicals, elements to, to create a protein. You need to do that. But then after that, you have to fold it in just the right way for it to function properly. And if it's not folded in just the right way, it can create a disease. And these are prions. These are prion diseases. And we're just, just beginning to learn about them. Really, a lot of this. But uh, you've heard them. You've heard of some of the mischief they can cause, even though you may not have realized that it was caused by prions. And, and mad cow disease, ring a bell. This is where the prions infect cattle. It's primarily in the brain. These, these prion diseases tend to be concentrated in the brain. They tend to affect the brain. They're neurodegenerative diseases. But mad cow diseases, when prions infect, uh, I don't even want to use the word infect. It's more that there is something wrong and it's partly genetic and it's partly a mechanism we don't fully understand but it's something that causes these proteins primarily on the surface of the cells of, a, of an organism like a cow that cause them to just start misshaping and then they in turn it's almost it's almost like they're there they cause other normal proteins to start getting misshapen and next thing you know you have a whole your whole body is full of these misshapen proteins and your body just starts shutting down but it, primarily it happens in the brain the mad cow disease uh scrapey in a uh, scrapey disease uh, if you have farm animals sheep or goat that's a big disease but get this um it was last year 2019 at the university of california in san francisco some research showed that um alzheimer's yeah alzheimer's may be associated with prion disease. They call it double prion disease even. I mean, we don't know a lot yet, so I, I don't want to go too crazy with it, but there is evidence um, that perhaps um, prions are behind, at least in part, um, Al Alzheimer's disease. So um, <clears throat> this is the unholy trio um, that causes diseases. Now, in a future uh, uh, video cast, Pretty soon, I'm going to talk specifically about the coronavirus and what makes it so deadly and what you can do about it. But I thought for now, that's a good start. And you thought being big and bad like us uh, was something to reckon with? It's the little guys. Like I said in my, my very first uh, broadcast, um, like my friend E.O. Wilson, world-famous Pulitzer Prize-winning sociobiologist at Harvard, EO said to me, Michael, don't ever forget, it's the little things at the bottom of the food chain that rule the world. And there you go, the unholy trio. Okay, stay safe, stay strong, and stay positive.